are you? Huh? Uh, get back here, you little turtle! Ha <laughs> uh, uh, I will catch you, you stupid thing! <laughs> You're right, Tootie, that does make my boss go berserk. Yeah, he's kind of an idiot. <sighs> like, I didn't already know that. So, why do you still work for him? That? I really don't know. My internship should have ended, like, a year ago. Huh. So, in the 1960s, programming languages, to put it lightly, were not designed to be fun to learn. COBOL attempted to make it easy-ish to learn, but just looking at it shows that it's not really all that fun to learn. Especially for younger kids. I mean, it's all just words, words, words! If I was trying to learn this language at the age of seven, my attention would have been taken up by... whatever seven-year-olds in the 1960s liked. So, to make programming more accessible to the younger generation, three researchers at BBN Technologies created the Logo Programming Language. Logo is a programming language that started development in 1967 for mainly educational use. Rather than having the program focus on text being outputted to a screen, Logo is based on giving instructions to a turtle. Commands in Logo move the turtle around, and the turtle has the ability to draw the path it takes. Early versions of Logo actually didn't use computer graphics, since computer graphics weren't really all that sophisticated in the 1960s. To get around the limitations of computers, Seymour Papert created a physical turtle robot named Irving. Yep, that's a turtle. She doesn't seem to mind, though. Logo eventually migrated from robotic turtles to computer graphics by the 1980s, where it exploded in popularity. Versions of Logo were available on most home computers, such as the Commodore 64, Apple II, and others. Many others. There was a lot of Logo ports. The version of Logo that I will be using in this video comes from the website LogoInterpreter.com. When I first stumbled across this site, I thought it was kinda charming, since it had the aesthetics of one of those websites with educational Flash games from the 2000s. That was until I realized that the website was made in 2014, and not the early 2000s, so it started to remind me of this ridiculously outdated feeling Congress ad. From Oklahoma. running for CD5 to represent you, Oklahoma, a courageous people. Enough of that! I can only take a certain amount of cringe before I die of excessive face palming. So, in Logo, the turtle starts out in the center of the screen. He can move forward a specified number of units. When this program is run, the interpreter animates the turtle's movement, and the turtle draws a line wherever he walks. The turtle can also turn left to right a specified number of degrees. If we have the turtle go forward four times, and between those forwards have a 90 degree turn, the turtle will make a square. Hmm, that code has copying and pasting, and I don't like copying and pasting in my code. Can it be made more efficient? Of course it can! We don't need to copy and paste code because we have the repeat keyword, which causes the turtle to repeat the actions inside the following brackets that many times. So we can make him spin! But anyway, we have it simply repeat the forward turn action four times, and the square code will instantly be made shorter. <laughs> Squares are boring though, I want a program that can make any kind of N-Gon. Sure! First things first, we have a variable labeled sides, which contains how many sides the polygon has. This is used to calculate angle, which is how much the turtle needs to turn in order to create a completed polygon. It repeats sides many times, rotating right by angle, followed by going forward some. And then we have a polygon. Polygons are cool, but what about other shapes? See, I've been playing Pokemon recently, so to praise Lord Helix, you should make the turtle draw a spiral. Spirals, huh? A spiral is drawn like a circle, but the distance traveled increases as the circle is drawn, rather than it remaining the same. The distance starts at zero, and the program enters a repeat block. The turtle moves forward distance, and then distance is slightly increased. After that, the turtle turns a bit. 
So we get a spiral. Spiral's neat and all, but I've been watching a lot of Imp Lemon recently, so it needs to be a downward spiral. I didn't know you had to be so needy, Idex. So, to imitate this, the background color is sent to magenta, and the pen color is sent to lime. Furthermore, the width of the pen is set based on the distance of the next line segment. This will cause the width of the line to increase as we reach the outside of the spiral, creating a pretty cool effect. Downward spiral, downward spiral, downward spiral, downward spiral, downward spiral. <sighs> that code is way too readable. Let's obfuscate it. Hey there, I'm Obfuscate, and I like to obfuscate code. Most logo keywords have a shortcut. This criminally readable forward can be changed to just FD. Now isn't that just nice and less readable? While we're at it, write can be changed to RT, and set pen color can be changed to just set PC. While we're at it, let's get rid of that descriptive variable name. Also, color names are just variables that represent numbers, so let's just use the numbers. Lastly, Logo doesn't care much about lines or indentation, so we can structure the code however we like. Such as like this. Now isn't that just nice and obfuscated? It's a nice, beautiful work of art. Wonderful. Thanks, Obfuscate. I don't remember inviting you on here, though. Anyway, if you want to try out Logo for yourself, you can find it on LogoInterpreter.com. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time!